Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Bo. Now there's a lot of firsts in this week's Torah portion. It's very exciting. We have actually the beginning of time. We read in Exodus 12, HaChodesh Hazeh Lachem Rosh Chodeshim. This month shall be for you the first of months. It's also really the beginning of the redemption. It's the beginning of the downfall of Egypt. And is it also possible that in this week's Torah portion we find the first instance of a GPS navigation system? You know, today, in order to get from one place to another, it's never been easier. You can practically do it with your eyes closed. You can use the Garmin Nuvi 3590 LMT. There's TomTom, Tom, there's the Magellan Roadmap, Roadmate, there's Latitude, Local Maps, MapQuest, oh, Google Maps, Copilot, GPS, Google Earth. I probably left some out, but in this week's Torah portion, when Hashem had to find the way to the Jewish homes, they didn't have any of that sophisticated technology, and it seems that in order to facilitate the Creator's navigation to the Jewish homes, the blood of the Passover offering was employed. At least, that's the way it seems ostensibly when we read the verses. It shall be yours for examination until the 14th day of this month. The entire congregation of the Assembly of Israel shall slaughter it in the afternoon. They shall take some of its blood and place it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they will eat it. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roast it over the fire in matzot with bitter herbs, shall they eat it. And then we read here in chapter 12, in verse 12, I shall go through the land of Egypt on this night, and I shall strike every firstborn in the land of Egypt from man to beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I shall mete out punishment. I am Hashem. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, and I shall pass over you. There shall not be a plague of destruction upon you when I strike in the land of Egypt." Now, there are different opinions expressed by our great sages of blessed memory about the nature, or rather the function, of this blood, or more specifically, the location of the blood. Thus we find in the Midrash, on this verse referring to the placement of the blood on the two doorposts and the lintel, we find the question, was this blood, was the intention of the verse on the inside of the house or on the outside? So, for example, we have the opinion of the great Rabbi Yishmael, who says that since the verse says, and I shall see the blood, that means that it's something that I see, but not others. Rabbi Natan says that it was on the inside. How do you know? Because the verse says, you shall see it. It says, and it shall be for you a sign, for you and not for others. And then, third opinion of Rabbi Yitzchak is that actually it was on the outside. Of course it was on the outside because when the Egyptians saw it, they got all flustered and they, their, the expression he uses is that their, their guts were all wrenched when they saw the blood of their idolatry on the doorposts. Now, what is really going on here? We have this difference of opinion amongst our sages, and like every other difference of opinion expressed by the sages, there are worlds hanging in the balance. This is not a simple argument or controversy, but rather this, I think, is a classic example of a beautiful principle that we have in Torah study regarding these differences of opinion, and it's called, These and These are the Words of the Living God. In other words, actually, on some level, both opinions are correct. Because I don't think that this is a real discussion about where the blood was placed, but rather a discussion of what is the necessary components for being redeemed. Now, if we opine that the blood was on the inside and couldn't be seen by anyone on the outside except by 
the Jewish people themselves celebrating the Passover inside, knowing full well that they took the blood of that which was being worshipped in a, in a pagan sense by the Egyptians, and they placed that for, them, for themselves to see, this expresses the idea of how we must be so convinced of the righteousness of our own path. We must be so emboldened by our belief and so unshakable that that was a sign, a reminder for us of who we are and what we are fighting against. At the same time, if you pine, that the blood was placed on the outside of the house. You know, it's like a tweet, a posting, a message that Israel was broadcasting to the Egyptians. I have a message for you. Take this. We're out of here. Both elements in the makeup of the Jew are necessary in order to be redeemed. We have to be able to be so connected to our identity constantly. We have to remind ourselves the blood was most certainly on the inside. Who cares what anyone else thinks? Hashem himself does not need a Magellan road um, mate or a Garmin Nuvi. 3590 LMT, or any of those devices. Hashem didn't need a GPS to find the houses. It was for us to see, to be so, again, emboldened. The other opinion is just as valid. It was certainly, most certainly, on the outside. But not to help God find the houses, but rather to send that clear message to the Egyptian host, your time is up. And this is the message of the Jewish people on the eve of their redemption. And of course, our sages tell us, and the Torah expresses so clearly, that when the final, perfect, complete redemption draws nigh, those events will cause the events of the Egyptian exodus to pale. We ain't seen nothing like the final redemption, about which the verse in Micha, chapter 7 and verse 15, reminds us, as in the days when you left the land of Egypt, I will show you wonders.